Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I was told I wouldn't see the audience, but now I do. <laughs> Growing up when something would break, my father would bring that broken item out to the workshop for fixing. He would do his best to attempt to fix it, and my brothers would be standing behind him like scavengers, ready to dive in once he said it couldn't be fixed. We'd dive in with our hammers, saws, screwdrivers, really just smashing things to get inside to see how pushing or pulling a lever would trip a switch and turn on a relay. We'd see how gears and cogs would interlock and how sensors, circuit boards, and switches work together to make an object. There weren't many toys, kitchen appliances, bicycles, automobiles, or computers that made it through our hands unscathed by our tools. During each of these dissections, we would find interesting parts, neat materials, and other components we could use in future projects. And those future projects consisted of a range of things. We built awesome bike creations, racing lawnmowers, and other random things. It was awesome. This picture here is of a go-kart I built when my mom and dad said I couldn't buy one, so I built one. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But growing up and looking back at all these experiences, they have taught me how to utilize time, resources, energy, and knowledge that I have around me. And I believe it's these past experiences that have led me to the next steps in my life. Another thing I was doing when I was younger was always coming up with ways to make money. My father would help with building and materials, and my mother would help with the administrative side, and sometimes I could even get my brothers to help for free. There was always something new coming out of the workshop. Birdhouses would be built from reclaimed lumber. I had a computer repair shop where parts from the local waste center would be used to upgrade a computer, a bike repair shop, and I would even dive into Segway handlebars where I'd pull the electronics out and put them into a new shell so that a customer could continue to use their their Segway. Those past experiences have always led me to the next steps. I was involved in, in scouting and other wilderness groups where we'd go on grand adventures with only the items in our pack. We'd carry in our camping supplies and food. We learned to appreciate, enjoy, and to leave no trace, leaving the area better than when we had found it. The next chapter in my life was college. Two days before the holiday break of my first semester of college, I learned about 3D printing and was instantly amazed. 3D printing is based on the simple principle of adding material instead of subtracting it to build an object. And it's this simple principle that allows for the most complex objects and designs to be made that can't be made with conventional manufacturing methods. The, those objects can be built with a 3D printer that costs less than $200. It's amazing. But what really amazed me about 3D printing was that the most common style of 3D printing used a plastic wire to build the objects. And that's where the light bulb went off. There needed to be a machine to take waste plastic and convert it into the feedstock for 3D printers. So I got home after college, after researching 3D printing for those two days, and I made a Kickstarter page. A simple page, no prototype, and I pushed publish. And over those next 30 days, that Kickstarter raised over $32,000 and sold over 67 systems worldwide. I'll also mention I didn't have a prototype at this point. <laughs> Be over, it would be over the next year and a half that I would build dozens of prototypes to make a machine that could take plastic and convert it back into filament for 3D printers. Overall, uh, we had a machine, I shipped them out, I refunded customers if the shipping costs were too high, and overall, a complete Kickstarter campaign with an uncompleted college degree. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> that was in 2011, and for the past six years, I have had the pleasure to work with such a great team on utilizing the widest range of plastic. Over those six years, and through the combination of industries that we've interacted with, we've learned so many things about plastic and the plastic issue as a whole. We've worked with chemical companies to test new plastic compounds. We've learned how plastic can be made from oil, plants, and even the air. We've learned the intricacies and the many weird things about the recycling system. We've learned the differences in material grades for the little numbers going from one to seven and the issues that actually where waste is created in a recycling system. We've learned about the recycling market, where plastic is recycled, upcycled, and downcycled, and we've seen the positive, life-changing things that plastic does for us, and we, we've seen how it allows us to live the life we have today. But we've also seen the negative sides of plastic, where plastic is polluting our environment, our oceans, our waterways, killing and strangling our wildlife, and affecting us in ways we cannot yet imagine or even comprehend and understand. After all the exploration and learning, it is a burden to know the full scope of the plastic issue. 
That all leads me to closing loops. Our mission at Philobot has always been to create a closed loop recycling system for waste plastic and turn it back into filament for 3D printers. While our work is but a small solution to the plastic problem, it's allowed us to see what dots need to be connected to make a lasting positive change with a plastic issue. We believe if the plastic issue was closed from reclamation to usage to production, we would not have a plastic issue. Now I could talk about plastic and the solutions that are being worked on all night, but what I really want to talk about is resource utilization and waste in general. How is it in a world so advanced we have such an archaic outlook and control over our resources? How is it possible for us to be fighting for these resources, yet on the other hand, throw them away without a second thought? We live in a throwaway society where it costs more to have something fixed than to buy new. Leaving some searching for the best deal on a new phone and others searching for their next meal. A society where materialism is out of balance with our resource utilization. We have to use our resources better, and we have to work to use our resources more efficiently and effectively so that we can provide for everyone on this planet and the many more people to come. Closing these waste loops will be the biggest issue over the next century, an issue that has to be solved before we venture onward and outward to other planets. We have to realize that waste is only waste when the loop is not closed. Thank you. <laughs>